before, the daughter of Pastor Mrs. Featherstone successfully defended her dissertation and has rightfully earned the title Dr. Sharifa Davis.
That's the first time I ever seen 60 or 70 people uh, being going into the doctor's office at the same time. <laughs> same day. We was all at jail yesterday. Have a beautiful day. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the work that you've done, and most of all, for all the prayers that you prayed. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.
St. Paul as a whole. But most, I want to thank Pastor Phyllis Stone for his business, his calls. I want to thank the deacon ministry for calling and checking on me. I want to thank everyone. Cause, uh, the call meant so much to me. Because when you're laid up, you don't see nobody or hear nothing from nobody, you wonder how people are doing. And I just thank I thank everybody just for all they done did since I've been out. And one thing I want to say, take care of your body. Start eating right. Amen. Your heart is a, a delicate thing. Without it, you can't, can't stay here. Right now, I'm on two batteries. That's my heart now, two batteries. Two 14 volt batteries. Because my heart, the egg stopped pumping. Wasn't pumping enough blood through my body. But I went in and did that surgery on 9 11. And didn't know when I went in, I wasn't going to come out. But I put them guards in. Amen. I told God, I said, look, I'm going in to do this. But I want you to send somebody down there to stand by the doctor and guide them through this. Amen. And I came out on the other side. But during that time, I had so much to be thankful for. Church, I can go on and on and on, but I'm not going to hold for long. But I just have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. Sometimes we take for granted we woke up on our own. We didn't. Yeah. Take, take my word for it. You didn't wake up this morning just on your own. Yeah. It wasn't for the grace of God you wouldn't have opened your eyes. Yeah. And every time I say I get a chance, I'm going to praise God. Yeah. I wake up a lot of nights, can't sleep. God just ministered to me. And he told, tell me, I think about it, like I said, that song and this song, his, his mercy and his grace. That's the only reason I'm still here. And, and church, don't take for granted. Don't take for granted. If you ain't got your life ready, get it ready. And right now, I don't got mine ready. I got my ticket. So I, right now, if God call me now, I'm, I, I got my bag already packed. And I just say I'm so grateful and thankful for everything. And I just want to say, church, I thank y'all for praying for me. I know it was a lot of y'all praying because we had it. I wouldn't have made it through. And a lot of prayer went up to heaven. <laughs> I think I told somebody, God said, let me do something for this fellow because all these people in the back would be the dead. <laughs> but that, like I say, I know y'all were praying for me and I appreciate it. You don't know how much. I love y'all. I love everybody. Because I can't get into hell from hating nobody. Thank you.
about yourself. Can you say that my soul is anchored in you? Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus, for giving us this powerful testimony. You've given us evidence of your power. And you told us that even when man says no, that you still say yes. Thank you today for letting us be able to witness your power, your awesome provision. If it had not been for your grace and your mercy,
Timothy chapter number four. And those who were a part of our Bible study teaching know that we uh, spent quite a bit of time teaching from 1 Timothy chapter four, verses one through five. And uh, this morning I want to lift this one verse for our scripture reading and this is the passage that we'll take today's message from. The word says, now the spirit expressly says that in latter time some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Now the Spirit says expressly that some will depart from the faith. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. We'll have ministry for my choirs and then I'll come back and forth.
know, you need to know this morning that you thank God for the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you stand on the promises of the Lord. And I know that this song is special to a lot of us, but it's probably even more special to Katie. Yeah. <laughs> like Robert, she has a unique story. Yeah. No one knows her story tell it like she can. Thank you all for ministering to us. God says you're not through. Father, we thank you now for an opportunity to sow back into the kingdom of God. We ask you to bless the gifts as well as the givers as we give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
most personal compelling evidence is the evidence that he lives within us. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. And that becomes personal. Yes. I know that he lives because he lives in me. God bless you. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Just a portion of it I read in this entirety earlier. Now the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. I want to just talk this morning about hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. In Paul's writing to Timothy, he spoke of a time when people would abandon the Christian faith as they gave attention to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. The Christian faith is not only abandoned for reasons mentioned by Paul, the Christian faith is also abandoned when our faith is under attack. Mm -hmm. Jew said these words in Jude 1 3. Jew said, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. <clears throat> the word contends means to put forth an intentional effort, a forceful effort, or to put forth a determined effort to defend something or to overcome something. Jude wrote the words of Jude to Christians who were threatened by apostates and heretics. Mm -hmm. Jude instructed Christians to fight for the faith because there were those who were trying to destroy the Christian faith. Mm. Listen to what Jude said about these men who opposed the Christian faith. In verse 4, Jude, Jude says, For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago was marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Despite the compelling evidence of God and Christ, Men will deny their very existence. Mm -hmm. Jude's response to these deniers is this. Jude said, defend the faith. Mm -hmm. The question arises, why should believers defend the faith? Believers should defend the faith because faith is worth defending. Now, if you take a note, just write that down. That's some good stuff. <laughs> defend the faith because faith is worth defending. You see, uh, there are many reasons why Christians should defend the faith. However, I want to just mention one reason. And the reason is this. The foundation of our faith is based on the finished work of Christ. Why defend the faith is worth defending, but the very foundation of our hope is based on our faith in the finished work of Christ. The hymn writer said it best in our black hymn, the hymn of 309, when he said that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. You see, in this hymn, the writer is talking about the foundation of our hope. You see, Paul said it like this about the 
foundation of our hope being through the finished work of Christ. Listen to what Paul said. Paul said, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. And your faith is also empty. He goes on to say, yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up. If in fact the dead did not rise. Verse 16, Paul said, for if the dead did not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Verse 19, if this in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all men are most pitiful. Paul concluded that uh, if we have no hope because of Jesus' finished work of Christ, finished work on the cross, if we have no hope because Jesus' finished work, we might as well eat, drink, and be merry. In other words, if we have no hope because of what Jesus did, we might as well give up and we might as well give in. But I have hope today. I have hope because I know my Redeemer lives. You know what you just said? I know my Redeemer lives and I have hope because I know he lives. Doesn't matter what other folks say. I, I know my Redeemer lives, and because of my faith in him, yeah. I'm determined to contend, defend, or fight for the faith. Jude was right when he gave these instructions to believers. <laughs> believers to say, you ought to fight for the faith. Yeah. Being instructed to contend for the faith underscores the reality that our faith will be under attack. Right. When we are attacked as Christians, we say these words. We say, I'm being attacked. I've been to you when you were going through some things and Satan was just messing with you. You said these words. You said, I'm under the attack of Satan. Well, well I want to ask this question. Are we being attacked? Or is our faith being attacked? You see, because I've discovered that an attack in any area of our life is really or ultimately an attack against our faith. Why, why do you say this? I say this for this reason. When we are attacked in any area of our lives, we are challenged to keep trusting God amidst everything that we're going through. Yeah. I mean, if I can just help us to understand it more clearly, an attack against our lives is really an attack against our faith. Because when you deal with sicknesses in your body, you have to believe that God, he is your healer. Yeah. You have to believe that even when you don't look well, that you will come out somehow. You got to have faith with when you go through what Robert went through, yeah. then you got to have faith yeah. that God will bring you out. Yeah. When some of you have had to battle with cancer and other diseases, you had to believe God yeah. that God would make a way somehow. God will heal your body, and one day you get up and you'll be perfectly sound again. When there is an attack against your finances, you have to believe God. Yeah. It won't be this way always. Yeah. You have to believe God, I'm broke today, but one day I'll have money in my pocket. Yeah. My bank account may look like this, but one day I believe that God, he's going to restore my faith. It takes faith to believe God when your finances are being attacked. Yeah. When there is 
and attack against your home. Come on now. Some of us can witness today that the devil here get busy in our home. Yes, yes, attacking our children. Attacking our relationship, attacking what we have. We try to break chaos in our home. But even in moments like that, you still have to have faith in God. Yes. Yes. Lord, I know you can build my house. I know that you can bring my wandering child back home. There, there's some of us here today are here because when we strayed away, there was a faithful mom or daddy, a faithful grandmother, granddad, uncle, aunt, or somebody who stood in our way and said, Lord, I believe you that you're going to bring that wandering child back home. When we are attacked spiritually, it is attack against our faith. You see, when Satan attacks us, we're still challenged to hold on to our faith. When Job was attacked, Job was attacked in more areas than his possessions, his family, and his health. Job's faith was really under attack. When, when you look at the premises for Satan wanted to come up against Job, you have to understand that Satan, he really wanted to destroy Job's relationship with God. Job's relationship with God was based on faith. Here's Satan as he comes against Job. And, 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 and first of all, he wanted to, to get God's permission, but he states the reason he wants to come against Job. Listen to what Satan says here. In Job 1, 10 and 11, Satan said, have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch forth your hand and touch all that he had and he will surely Crash you to your face. Right. You see, Satan, he messed with all that other stuff, but he was really attacking Job's faith. He said that if I destroy his livestock, if I destroy his servant, if I kill his children, and if I uh, touch his body, Satan was banking on the fact that Job would walk away from God. But despite everything that Job went through, Job still held on to his faith. Yeah. Yeah. Then what Job said, Job 13, 15, Job said, though he slay me, <laughs> yet will I trust in him, even so I will defend my ways before him. Job goes on to say in one other place, Job said, I know my redeemer lives. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just can't give up on him, even though I'm going through some things. I got to hold on to my faith. Right. At times in this life, we are challenged to keep believing God. Yeah. We are challenged to keep trusting God when we don't initially see what we want to see. You see, at times, we are challenged to keep believing God. Yeah. We are challenged to keep trusting God when we don't get the answer from God, we expect it to get. God won't always answer you the way you want him to. And at that moment, you have to stretch out on your faith and say, I'm still going to trust God. I'm still going to believe God. I'm going to trust him and I'm going to believe him because I know that my Redeemer, he still lives. Down right now, but, but my Redeemer lives. He'll bring me back. In other words, whatever I'm going through right now, my faith tells me to stand there because I know trouble, it will one day end. Paul said in Romans 8, 24, 25, Paul says, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? If we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it in perseverance. Mm. See, see, understand.
understand this thing about hope. Faith and hope are intertwined. If we lose faith, we lose hope. Get this because your faith is vital to you this morning. If you ever lose your faith, you lose all hope. Hope gives an earnest or an eager expectation that something is coming. Why will you earnestly or eagerly expect something to come if you don't have faith? Paul said if you already got it, you don't need hope for that. You already got it. But there's something you don't have and you want it to be manifested in your life. It takes faith to hold on to your hope. Hebrews 11 1 said, Now faith is the something of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If, if, if I can say it this way, faith is what we stand on until what we hope for comes to fruition. If, if you're waiting or you don't see it, yet you believe it's coming, but while you're waiting for it to come, you've got to stand on your faith. In other words, your faith is all you got at times. You don't see the evidence of what you're looking for, but you're hoping that it will come. And because of your faith, you said, I'll wait until my change comes. Some of your challenge today to hold on to your faith while you're waiting for what you are expecting. And I don't know how long you've been waiting. I don't know what your wait is like. But can I just tell you today to hold on to your faith. Don't you ever let go of your faith. If you give up on your faith, you're like a sunken ship. You got to just hold on. To the faith. Faith is what we live by. Hebrews, I mean, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, but we walk by faith and not by sight. What the writer wants us to understand is that we don't live by what we see. You see, as believers, we are challenged to keep trusting when we see some things, when we hear some things, when we feel something and experience something, we are challenged to keep trusting. Can anybody understand, you understand that, don't you? Amen. You're going to see some things. You're going to feel some things. You're going to experience some things. You're going to hear some things. But despite what you see, feel, hear, or experience, you still got to walk by faith. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you heard. <laughs> but you're going to hear some stuff. I don't know what you feel. Sometimes you'll feel all kinds of things in your body. You feel some things in your, in your emotions. Sometimes you just seem to not know which way to turn. It looks like things are dark. But at those moments, you still got to hold on to your faith. Yeah. Our faith at times, it is the only thing that keeps us going. Hear what the psalmist said in Psalm 27, 13. The psalmist said, I would have lost heart. Unless I had believed, I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Can I translate what the psalmist said? The psalmist said, I would have given up if I didn't have faith that God would come through for me. Somebody today, you've got to just hold on to your faith. You believe that God, he's going to come through for you. Someone saying in a song, I don't know when God's going to do it. But I know God's going to do it for me. I, I don't know how long I got to wait, but I wait because God is worth waiting for. The psalmist said, I would have given up, I would have fainted, I would have lost heart, I would have flown in the town had it not been for my faith in God because I believe a better day is coming. Faith, this intricate component of our lives, will both be attacked and it will be tested. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Faith 
that is so important to us is attacked on one hand by Satan, but then on the other hand, your faith will be tried. Yeah. Here's what James said. James said, my brethren, count it on joy. Yeah. I don't see some folk happy because they're going through stuff today. <laughs> folk, folk frown up, bemoan the fact that I'm dealing with some issues in my life. But James said, no, 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 no. When, when, when your faith is being put to the test, James said you ought to count it all joy. Some Christians ought to smile. Some of y'all look like you can eat sour grapes or something. Y'all ought to smile sometimes. I don't know what you're dealing with, but every once in a while when you're going through a trial, you still got to smile. Why? Because your faith is being put to the test. Okay. Now, now look what James said. James said, my brother ain't counting all joy. When you fall in the various trials. Why? Knowing the testing of your faith uh -huh. produces patience. Yeah. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. In other words, James said, when your faith is put to the test, it produces something of value in you. Yeah. Some stuff you can't get now unless you're going through. Yeah. And I know we don't like to go through, but there's some stuff. That's produced in us because our faith is put to the test. It produced some patience in us. And what James is really saying, what it's produced in us, it makes us better, not worse. So James said, when you're going through your trial, you ought to just cheer up. Because if you hold on to your faith, you'll be stronger, not weaker, when you come through your testing period. If you can just hold on, something better. It's coming on the yeah. alive. Don't you dare lose your heart today. Some of you have had setbacks and you've even been set up. But if you just hold on to your faith, God, he'll bring you out of it. And when God brings you out, I declare you're going to be better because of what you've been through. Here Jesus talking to Peter now. And I'm almost finished. Talking to Peter in Luke 22, 31 and 32. Jesus said these words to Peter. He said, he said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Your brother. Satan asked for Peter. Yeah. And what Satan wanted to do is, Satan wanted to shake Peter to the point that Peter would lose his faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, Satan wants you, but I, I prayed for you. Isn't that some good news today? Yeah. I mean, you know that if there's any prayer God hears, he hears the prayer of his son. Peter had to know it's coming, but Jesus said, I pray. Yeah. Can I tell you today, if you're going through some things, the same Jesus who prayed for Peter, he prays for you too. Yeah. Our high priest, yeah. who have passed into the heavens, yeah. he makes intercessions uh, for us. Yeah. I tell you, that's something to get excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, I'm going through stuff down here. Yeah. 
Some of you have been through the fire. And some of you have been through the floods. But you're still holding on to your faith. When I thought about Peter, my mind went back to my childhood days. And probably you have a mom like my mom, our mother was. Mama used to make biscuits the old fashioned way. This was before yeah. Reverend Papa. And this was before whoever, whoever come out of that can, you pop that thing and folk make biscuits today. Before those days, my mama had a sister, and that was an old flower barrel that sat in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Mom would go to that barrel and she would take this, this metal sifter and she would pour the flour into that sifter. Yeah. And then it had a handle on the side and she would just crank it around and around. And as she cranked the pine flour, it flowed out of the bottom but in the lumps in the flour, it was taken out. In other words, sometimes in life, just like the sifter did for the flower, Satan, he wants to sift us. Satan was sometimes to try to do everything in his power to cause us to become disconnected from our faith. And maybe you and Satan sifter today, you're going through some things you don't understand, but the flames they just keep coming one after another. And Satan wants to cause you to lose heart.
He couldn't tell Isaac that God told me to take you up on the mountain and to offer you as a burnt offering. But Abraham had his faith. Abraham had told his servant that the land and I were going up on the mountain, but we're coming back down again. You see, the land of Hebrew, he brings the conclusion to the story. And what the land of Hebrew said, that Abraham had so much faith in God, he believed that if God allowed him to kill him, that he was going to raise him back up again.
God's 